Welcome to the Product Design Show. I'm Vince Penman. Every product starts off as an idea. Product concept design is all about shaping that idea into a real product. Processes for product concept design don't develop in a vacuum. In today's episode, we'll look at how modern product concept design has developed and where it's going. I'm Allison Tupperwine. Product concept design has undergone some major transformations since the beginning of the 20th century. Leading companies back in the day generated novel product ideas internally and then validated them through research and experimentation. Research companies like Edison's Menlo Park R&D Lab pioneered a path of experimentation that led to the creation of products like the modern light bulb, the phonograph, and an electrical grid based on DC current. This period of product concept design was mainly guided by the solitary genius making breakthroughs in moments of sheer creativity. Although many incredible products were created during the late 1800s through 1940, the market demanded increasingly sophisticated products. These complex market demands and new manufacturing techniques, like assembly lines, required that more people get involved with the concept design. Companies like Xerox found their stride during the period after World War II. Having changed the business world with the introduction of its 813 copier in 1963, Xerox set out to revolutionize product concept development. In 1970, Xerox opened the Park Research Facility and Park created an explosion of new products driven by team collaboration. This team collaboration was built around a single idea. Electronic communication was just gathering some steam and Park's engineers were tasked with designing the office of the future. Xerox assembled a team of designers and engineers that worked in a collaborative culture, sharing ideas about how the office of the future should operate. Within months, the Park model of product concept design was being lauded the world around as a truly innovative way to develop products. Teams would isolate specific problems within the office environment and come up with product solutions. For example, if documents couldn't be printed fast enough, engineers would design a laser printer. If inter-office communications were too slow, they would create an Ethernet local area network. Through dedicated research and a single core vision, the Park team was able to collaborate creatively to design some truly amazing products. Today, technologies like the internet and rapid prototyping are bringing product concept design closer to its origins where a single individual could create something that changes the way people interact with the world. Take, for instance, Stephen Stewart's idea for a cable organizer. Like most of us, Stephen had a problem with cables around his desk nodding, jumbling, and making an overall mess. Stephen submitted his idea to Quirky.com where it was perfected by Quirky's product design team. In a span of 28 days, Stephen's idea became a product called Cordy's. To date, over 270,000 Cordy's have been sold. The way that individuals and companies have pushed product concept design have led to a world where nearly every market need has a product to suit it. But the framework for designing products isn't the only factor in product concept design's history. In our next episode, we'll take a look at how technological innovations have revolutionized the tools that designers use to create their products. Thanks to PTC, the product development company, for sponsoring this episode. You can see their tools that support product concept design at ptc.com slash go slash creoparametric. Thanks for watching this episode of the Product Design Show. Please give it a like on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or give us a rating on iTunes.